another meeting I need to hop into, but please know if you have any questions or any uh, comments that you want to share, don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us at any time. I thank you all for being here today. And uh, as I said, we will get to your questions at the end of the training. Without further ado, Stephanie, you want to take it away? I sure can. Thank you, Cheryl. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie Benedict, and um, obviously it wouldn't be a great Zoom meeting if something didn't go wrong. So as you can see, my camera's not working, but um, you should all be able to see the screen that says Durgo Star for Principals and Process Managers. And I see a few of you shaking your head, so that's great. Um, the first thing I wanted to address is um, the PDF that was sent out. If anybody's having issues seeing that on their screen and having to rotate it, um, if you open the PDF, you can go up to view and then rotate clockwise and it should flip your whole PDF so you can see it landscaped on your screen. All right. So today I'm going to talk about um, what Derigo Star is, what it's meant to do, um, how and why you're going to work through each piece of the process. I know sometimes um, it feels like something else, another tool we have to do. Um, and Derigo Star has some really great resources um, and it's a really great process for school leadership teams to um, engage in. And I really think that um, all of you could um, benefit from some of the pieces I'm going to talk about today. So I'll walk you through each step and talk about how you do it, why you do it, um, and then give you some tips and hints. And also I have embedded some questions. Sometimes we get questions, why do we have to do this piece or can we do it another way? So I'm just gonna talk about some of those pieces um, and why it's beneficial to do them in the Derigo Star system. Again, if you have questions, type them into the chat box and we will get to them all at the end. All right, here goes. So what is Derigo Star? So Derigo Star is a web-based tool that guides leadership teams in charting its improvement. So helping your teams figure out what you need to do. Um, and then Derigo Star is a tool. You can put those plans in and you can monitor it um, it'll show you what's past due, what's coming up. So it's a really good process for kind of managing that process. Um, focus is meant to be clear. So as you start putting the indicators in the system and your plans and your target dates, you're really looking at um, this is what we're, we're focusing on. Responsibilities should be shared. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth when we get into um, creating the plans and the action steps and how to kind of distribute that work um, so that it doesn't really fall all on the principal or all on two lead teachers. We really wanna distribute the work. Um, and then efforts are synchronized. So everybody's on the same page. We're all following the same routine. We know what the plan is. Um, and one thing that's not listed here is transparency. And I think it's really good um, one of the features of Derigo Star is that there is that bit of transparency. So it's not just, um, you know, falling to the principal to create a plan. He's working, he or she is working with the leadership team. Um, the leadership team has access. They have their own login and password so that they can follow along during the meetings or in their own time. And then we have the guest login and password that you can share with um, the school community if you want them to know what your focus is for improving your school and those efforts. Um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about um, before I get straight into Derigo Star is where Indostar came from and Indostar is our kind of main name. And then we, um, when states adopted the platform, we wanted it to be more yours as you get to decide which indicators and um, what the expectations are for schools. We also let each state name it. Um, and of course it's called Derigo Star in Maine. So where did Indostar come from and all the work that's in, embedded in the tool? Um, the Academic Development Institute was part of um, a national center. We were actually the main partner in one of the national centers on um, innovation and improvement in 2005 until 2012. 
And one of the first requests from the federal government was to do research on what successful schools do consistently that makes them successful. So we did the research and we published the handbook on restructuring and substantial school improvement. Um, that is can be found on the Industar website under free resource, free resources, excuse me. Um, the publication won an ERA award in 2008. And it's basically a, a synthesis of what successful schools do. We came up with effective practices, um, which um, for most of you, you'll know effective practices um, in general are large, larger um, practices and, and you have to break those down. So we decided instead of making schools break them down, we decided to break them down um, even more granular and we came up with indicators of effective practice. And that's what you're going to see in the Darago Star system. So we did the research. We found the effective practices and broke them down into small indicators. And what we give you in Durigo Star is the indicators, but we also go back in and give you that research and those tools so that you don't have to go search where the, this information came from um, or search how successful schools um, manage to implement these practices. So in 2007, we decided to make it an online platform because that's kind of the way the world was going at the time. And, and we wanna make it efficient. One of the things that was important to us when we built Industar was that not only could a school go into the system um, and electronically house their information and kind of follow along, but that transparency piece. So coaches could support you online in real time. Um, Fran, if she wanted to, could type a coaching comment to her school in her own time and schools would automatically get that information. Um, districts can look down at all of their schools and see what each of their schools is doing. Um, they can also aggregate information from your plans at the district level and, and think about what do our schools, all of our schools need from us um, in regards to maybe professional development and supports. And then of course the state has uh, the state view of, of the tool as well. Um, we strongly believe that school improvement is best accomplished when directed by the people closest to the students, so the teachers, the principals, um, and also um, help and assistance from the parents and the rest of the school community. So we're going to talk about some roles and responsibilities because um, it's it's pretty important inside of the tool to make sure that everybody knows what their roles are and their responsibilities so that one or two people don't get overloaded um, with work. Industar is about, or Darago Star is about building capacity of kind of each level. So the first level, the principal, the principal of course leads the school building and also leads the leadership team. Um, the principal works to implement effective leadership practices. And we're going to talk a little bit later when we get into the indicators about distributed leadership. So the leadership team is going to become more than just a team who has conversations with the principal about what we're doing. We really want um, that leadership team to take on the role and some of those responsibilities that may fall on the principal. Uh, the process manager in a school um, everybody who has a Darago Star platform should have a process manager. Um, one of the indicators specifically talks about principals spending 50% of his or her time in the classroom. And I know that seems um, for some principals in some schools an insane amount of time that they, they just don't have. Um, but so the one thing we don't want to do is give them one more responsibility and make the principal responsible for creating meeting agendas and entering the information into Darago Star. So one of the first things the principal should do with the leadership team is decide who is going to um, create the meeting agendas, enter the information in the system, and keep all of that up to date. I always think it's good to have a couple people on hand. Um, to rotate that responsibility. I know several leadership teams um, that I've seen over the years rotate that every three or four months, um, just so that 
the, the plan keeps moving forward and nobody's stuck, um, just one person doing that. And then of course the coach, the state has coaches provided to um, all or most of you. The coach is there to review the work of the leadership team and offer feedback and they can do that right directly in the system. Uh, the coaches are there to support, guide, and build capacity of the leadership team, not just the principal, um, but the whole entire leadership team. So we're trying to build um, the capacity there. The coach is, shouldn't be um, uploading for the schools, shouldn't be completing forms for the schools or entering information. We really want that to be something that the school leadership team takes a hold of so that they can build that capacity um, for themselves. So we always tell the coaches they're trying to work themselves out of a job um, because there's, I'm sure, another school that's going to need them down the road. Um, and then we talk about, um, we, we talk a lot about the leadership team, but I don't want um, anyone here or anyone at a school to think that everyone is not involved in the Darago Star process. The leadership team is there to lead the school improvement process. They're there to make the decisions about what we're doing for school improvement. Um, so assuming that primary responsibility. But there are definitely indicators that focus on instructional teams, grade level teams, school community. So you'll see as we start working through the process, and some of you may already have seen this in your schools, that when you start focusing on some of those indicators that talk about planning instruction, or student assessments, you're definitely going to reach out to those instructional teams, all of your teachers, even in some cases, all of, you know, all of the faculty in the whole entire school. Um, and then of course, the school community, we want to part of the indicators talk about family engagement. And we want to make sure that parents know that, um, you know, the school is a welcoming place and to be able to um, have them feel okay with with talking with the school members um, and giving the support to the school. So expectations of the leadership team, um, definitely on the leadership team. When I come to this, sometimes I get the, uh, we already have our leadership team in place and, and that's great, but I always want um, principals to think um, very, um, always be on the lookout for other people who might benefit your leadership team. Um, it should be people who are willing to meet on a regular basis. If Diane has a hair appointment every other month and can't make the meeting every other month, um, you know, maybe we put somebody else on the team. We really want somebody to, who's going to commit to being at every single school leadership team meeting. Um, engaging in a culture of candor, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but of course you know that um, that is being open and honest about what's really going on in our school. Um, assessing indicators, so really looking at the indicators, reading the research, and having a conversation about do we really do this or do we not. Um, creating plans and action steps, of course, monitoring the work, and then reviewing and responding to coaching comments. And this is just a little tip that I embedded. Did you know that according to research, successful leadership teams meet twice per month for at least an hour? Um, so in order for your school team to be consistent and to really see progress, we highly suggest um, that leadership teams meet twice a month for at least an hour. And that's actually one of the indicators in the Darago Star system. So that might be one of the first ones that you start with. Um, with your team talking about why we should be meeting. There's research there that you can read and have a conversation about. Um, and then put a plan in place and a calendar in place that you guys can meet on a regular basis. Um, culture of candor. Uh, I just wanted to kind of highlight a few areas in the culture of candor. Um, your accountability as educators is to students and to each other. So making sure that whoever's on that leadership team can be open and honest about what's going on in our school, because we know that the changes we make affect the students that we teach, um, as well as each other. 
Um, you should be comfortable with transparency. Um, everybody knows that school improvement is not always um, rainbows and unicorns. Um, it's, it can be, you know, rough at times to realize you're not doing things as well as you thought you were doing. Um, but in Darago Dur Star, I always say that's okay. You can't fix anything that you don't try to fix. So um, really you're doing a disservice to yourselves if you say, you know what, I think we're close enough. We're fully, fully implemented. Let's move on. So I would really uh, make sure that you take a, a good long look at each individual indicator and have those good conversations. Um, openness to the data about what student outcomes are and about the practices that contribute to them. So in Darago Star, we really look at um, what happens in the classroom, in the hallways, um, in the principal's office, at home. So what are the adults doing and how does that affect student learning? Um, and what can we do to um, change some of those things? One other thing I would, I would talk about on openness to the data is a lot of times we see schools um, that have purchased, for example, a $2 million reading program. And it's not having the benefits or the effect that you thought you were having. And sometimes that comes out in the conversations um, with your leadership team. And so being open to really look at, at those programs and say, are we not, is this not the right program or are we just not doing it correctly? And could we benefit more um, if, we, if we change the way we use the tools that we have? Um, focusing on the practice, not the person. So on the indicators, and we'll talk about this again in a little bit, but some of the indicators say all teachers do this, all teams do this, and all means all. Our goal can't be that most of our teachers do it or some of our teachers do it. We really need it to be the goal to be all teachers. So, but it's not necessarily you know, well, Fran doesn't do it or Al doesn't do it. Um, so why should the rest of us change? We really need to get everybody on board and say, this is what we do at our school and be very consistent. So it's just about the practices that are consistent across the board and how we can make that happen. Um, a strive towards universal and consistent practice, like I just said, and the willingness to get better. Um, to have high expectations for our, all of our teachers that are in your building and know that everybody really can do it. Um, I, I have the story about I was training once and a teacher came in and sat in the front row and crossed her arms and said, I have been a teacher for 20 some years and there's nothing that you can say that's going to make me do it differently. Um, and which took me a little bit off guard, um, but she really, um, realized that she had a lot to offer the other teachers, some of the newer teachers, but they also had a lot to offer her. And so we had some good conversations later on at the end of the day um, about how this process just really helped her realize that um, it's not only about learning, but it's also about giving and teaching, teaching others. So the next two slides talk about best practices for Darago Star success. And these are actually all, there's six of them. They are embedded inside of Darago Star as indicators. Um, but I'm going to, these are the ones that we think that if, if schools really focus on, it can really get them started down the process of making some change. So the first one is, um, of course, school leadership teams meet regularly. Um, twice a month for at least an hour to review multiple data sources and then assess and improve professional practice based on the indicators. Um, and these are kind of a couple indicators merged. The second one is that instructional teams meet regularly, um, large blocks of time to review student performance data and develop and refine differentiated instructional plans and formative assessments. Sometimes instructional teams just don't have the ability. Um, actually, in the research, I believe it says they meet for blocks of time for, um, I think it's four hours. So sometimes um, I know in Arkansas, that's not how instructional teams can meet. 
So they've made adjustments for that. So if you see any indicator and a research says it, you know, successful schools do it for four hours, um, but you just can't make that work in your school day, make what right now what works for you and what can and what can change and benefit your teachers and teams. Um, three is principals provide direction for the teams, focus on instruction and build leadership capacity. Um, again, this process is about for the principal, um, not having to be the only one in charge of things in the school, really taking that lead, those leadership team members um, and distributing the work inside of Darago Star that, so that they're not in charge of the whole school improvement plan. They actually share that responsibility with all the team members. Um, four is teachers implement effective instructional practice guided by indicators. So again, um, looking at the indicators, there's a lot of them that talk about um, teachers do this or don't do that. There's ones that talk about professional development. Um, and so these indicators can really be used to affect um, what you learn and how you support your teachers, what kind of professional developments um, they're given what kind of professional developments to ask the district for. Um, so there's a lot of benefit from using the indicators inside of Darago Star. Five is for the coaches. So the coaches are regularly um, required to review the work of the leadership team. So I actually just had a training with the coaches, I'd probably say about three or four weeks ago. Um, and we talked about their responsibilities and their support to their schools. And one of those pieces was that coaches would regularly give you feedback in the system on your plan to help you build your capacity. Um, and then, you know, if you, if you don't have some data or you need some help with something, that's what the coaches are there to help you um, through with your work. And then the last one is teachers, parents, school board members, and the district review reports to the guest site to stay abreast of the evolving plan. I would highly encourage all of you, um, whether you're a principal, process manager, to take the guest login, and it can be located at the top of your um, Darago Star page. In the right-hand corner, there's a drop-down that says logins. There's two of them there. One is for the leadership team members so they can follow along during your meetings. And the other one is for the guest. I would highly encourage you to, to log in as a guest so that you see by sharing that login and password with parents or other school community members um, exactly what they see. They don't see the coaching comment conversations that go back and forth. Um, they don't see meeting agendas or minutes unless you decide that they should see one or two specific ones. Um, they won't see anything that's uploaded. All they see is which indicators you're working on and the plans you've created for those. So I would highly encourage you to take a look at the guest page and when you feel comfortable, distribute that login so you can um, build some transparency in your school community. Um, this slide talks about adult performance uh, plus student performance equals increased student learning. Um, but I think the bigger piece is underneath is the adult performance is measured by the indicators. So that's what we're using Darago Star to do is, is measure what we do and how that affects the students that we teach. Student performance is obviously measured by goals and, and strategy targets. And inside of Darago Star, you can actually put um, goals and performance measures. If you want to, you know, increase certain areas, you can actually type that right into Darago Star um, so that it becomes part of your plan as well. And before we get into the system, I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, annual plans versus continuous improvement plans. And obviously Darago Star is meant to be continuous improvement. Um, annual plans, um, I thought this was kind of a good definition of it. it. It keeps you looking backwards. Did we do what we said we were going to do at the beginning of the year? Um, and continuous plans are meant to focus on um, where do we want to be in one year? What are we going to do tomorrow? What, what targets are due next week? So it really has you looking into the future and kind of expanding and building upon the work. Um, 
constantly reevaluating your work um, and your plan. Star makes it very easy that if something happens, and last year, obviously, we saw something happen in the world, um, and sometimes things that were a priority two months ago have to take a back seat to something else that has become a priority. So Star gives you the flexibility to um, select indicators to be a part of your plan. Um, and if something changes and you need to switch course, you can unselect those indicators and go choose new ones. So you can make those adjustments anytime. We've tried to make it as flexible as possible. There are a few occasions when um, you will have to call us and um, we will provide client services. There's actually only me and Luann here that provide client services to you. And we're happy to, to do that for you should you not be able to find a way to edit that in the system. Now we're gonna get into the system. Um, and for process managers, as well as principals who may be moving, getting in here and moving around, um, I wanted to talk about just the, the main dashboard of the Darago Star system. We tried to make it very intuitive. So that main menu bar on the left side um, includes all of the links for everything on the right. So if you're inside manage meetings and you're making a meeting, if you need to hop back to another place, always just look at that main menu on the left-hand side. It stays open all the time, so you can really utilize that to um, manage your work and to kind of navigate around. I'm going to talk about each of the different pieces, what's in our direction, our meetings, success cycle and our progress, as well as the, some of the other tools like the bulletin board, um, document upload, and forms. All right, so the Jerigo Star dashboard, this is a little bit easier to look at. It doesn't have everything on it. Um, our direction, we're gonna talk about team profile. You can put your vision and mission there. I highly encourage you, and you'll see this embedded throughout my PowerPoint, um, I would highly encourage you to put in your vision and mission, to put in demographics, to put in your goals. Um, it makes it a lot easier when um, Sue is coaching your school to be able to go in and look at all of that information and know what your school is about. What are your demographics? Um, you know, what is your vision? What are your values as a school? So for her to be able to coach, it's really nice to be able to have all of that information in the tool um, in, in kind of one place. And we're gonna talk about um, selecting indicators, creating meetings, of course, working through the plan. So assessing, planning, monitoring, all of that. Um, and then our progress, how you can monitor the work that you're doing, um, right directly in the system. So one thing I'll say about the system is as soon as it's entered, um, it's live information. So if, if Douglas entered the information for the school um, to right now, Cheryl at the State Department can actually see that. She could actually be logged in and look down and see all of that information. So if you ever have you know, someone call you at the state or a coach calls you, you can both log in and be seeing exactly the same information at all times. The only time submissions are um, really relevant, like if you wanted to submit your plan, that's really more of a way of archiving where you were at a certain point in time. All right, we're gonna talk about updating your profile, why it's important, and then setting your direction. So the school information, we actually get all of your school information sent to us by Al or Terry. And we register your schools. And a lot of times that information is not correct. Um, you know, maybe the principal left a month ago. Um, we don't usually have a process manager listed. So it's very important um, for the principal or process manager to make sure that the school information is correct. The principal's email address is um, name and email address are correct, and then add your process manager to the school information. We have email notifications that go back and forth in Darago Star. So if um, Fran was to send her school 
a coaching comment, the principal and process manager get an email notification that says you have a new coaching comment in Darago Star. Um, likewise, the coaches, I ask them to make sure their information is correct um, on my list that I have for them. Because when you respond as a leadership team to Fran's comment, she will get dinged in her email um, that says she has a response from the school. So it, it's really good to be able to have that inf information correct. Um, it's also good for client services. Sometimes we have somebody called that says I'm the process manager, um, but their name is not listed under process manager. So it takes us a little bit longer to um, to get them the information that they really need. And we really try in client services to be within minutes, you know, doing your support um, so that the best you can help us is, is good. Leadership team can be entered in our direction under the school's profile. Um, this is important because, again, email notifications. So when the process managers go in and create a meeting agenda, they add meeting minutes. When they hit save, they get a pop-up that says, would you like to notify your leadership team members that a new agenda has been created? Um, and if you say yes, it will notify all of your team members via email that there's a new agenda for October 1st. Um, and it gives them their login and password that they can just directly log into the system and see that information. Um, we talked about distribution of leadership and work. Um, in the system, you assess the indicators, you create plans and action steps, and then you monitor the work. Um, when we're creating plans, and let's, for example, say the school has decided on 10 indicators to focus on at one time. We don't wanna make the principal responsible for each of those indicators. We want to distribute the work, so if there's five leadership team members, maybe each of them can take two. And they're responsible for connecting with the folks that have action steps to complete. Um, they're responsible for, responsible for making sure that evidence is gathered. So sharing the responsibility of each team member has some work on their plate and it's not all falling to one person. And then it's also important to um, have the data in the system. I'm gonna switch this for a second. Um, like demographics. So how many teachers are in your school? How many kids receive free lunches? What are the ethnicity and race percentages? Um, we get a question a lot that says, this is somewhere else. We're not asking for a whole lot, just a few demographic um, pieces of information. And we don't use this information. But it is important when your coaches go in there to be able to provide the best support. Um, they really need to have the picture of your school, um, especially if they're a new coach or they're not familiar with things going on in your area. It's really best to just to have that in there. Um, it probably won't take more than five minutes for somebody to enter that information. And then just making sure every year you update that information. Um, also in our direction, which is that first block, is mission and goals. So who are we? What do we want to become as a school? What do we value most? Um, what is our vision? What do we want to achieve? And how uh, will we gauge our degree of success? So those are all things associated with mission, vision, values, and goals. Um, we even added a couple of years ago a place to put performance measures. So if you want to say we need to raise math scores by a certain percentage, and that's kind of one of our measures or um, reading scores or whatever you want to do. You can actually put those right in the system. Um, that benefits you as a school because it's all directly in one place. Um, again, it, it benefits for coaches is that it's also all in one place. And those can just be entered in. There's just a little text box that you can type each of those pieces in. Again, the system is editable. So if you need to go in and edit any of those things at any time, all you do is go in and change it and click save again. So it's, it's pretty easy to work through. Um, in our direction, um, the data piece. 
So there is a place to put your needs assessment accreditation reports, summaries of those, um, of what they said. We don't actually, we don't provide a needs assessment to any of our schools or um, across the nation, but there is a place where the state has provided you a needs assessment under the electronic forms on the dashboard. And if you're looking at the dashboard, um, there's the four main boxes and there's a, a bar below that that says forms to complete or complete forms. You can find those in there. But here in our direction, um, we want you to just put a summary. What did the data say? What was our conversation about? Um, the same thing for student outcome data. So just a brief summary of the trends, the high points, the low points. Um, what do we kind of think we need to focus on? And then the last part is um, selecting your indicators. That's the last piece of um, our direction. And we really want you to select indicators after you have those conversations. What do we need to focus on? Um, and can we find those areas in Darago Star? And there should be, everybody should be able to find something in Darago Star that matches up what you need to focus on. Um, I would say that you need to have a manageable amount. Um, it varies from state to state, from school to school, how many indicators they really think they can focus on. Because the work is distributed, um, because you're breaking it down into action steps of things you need to do and target dates, we truly believe that schools can manage 10 to 15 indicators in a year. And for some schools that seems very unmanageable, I would say talk with your coach, um, talk with the state and see what, what you really can manage. You might only start out with two or three at the first meeting to really assess um, and until you get your feet wet. But I really do think it's manageable for schools to do anywhere between 10 and 15 indicators. But if you need to start off with fewer than that, um, you know, that's, that's your choice. And, and I would do what's comfortable. I wouldn't do too little. Sometimes um, we have seen schools just focus on two or three. And if you think about that in the scheme of progress, how much progress are you really going to see if you're only focused on two or three, two or three indicators? Um, because they are very granular and we'll look at those in just a minute. And so now I'm gonna talk about the indicators since we were just mentioning that. Um, I wanna talk about the structure of the indicators and kind of how they're written. So the structure of um, the indicators in Darago Stars Library, their core functions, so so kind of the main topic areas, the effective practices, which a lot of times is what schools use to say, I'm gonna make a school improvement plan and here's what practices we're going to change. Um, but we found a lot of times that schools, um, you know, maybe broke it down a little bit, but didn't break it down far enough. So we've just taken it um, one step further and broken those indicators down. And I know when you look inside of Darago Star, there's quite a few indicators listed there. Some of them you may already be doing. Um, and for some of those indicators that you're doing and you're doing well, you have two choices. You could go ahead and assess it um, and make sure that you are fully implemented and mark it off. And that's kind of a, you know, kind of a quick win. Um, or you could just skip over those and focus on the next one up that you really need to, to start working on. Um, the core functions, this just gives you a quick look at the kind of the different areas. And if you're in Darago Star already, um, you might be familiar with this, but it's district support, leadership, professional development, aligning instruction, using data, nothing that you haven't heard of before, um, family and community engagement, redesigning the school day, week and year, targeted interventions. Uh, personalized learning was something that we actually added about four or five years ago. So we have in there all different types of metacognitive, blended, um, social emotional learning indicators that really focus on, on the kids. The effective practices are really the research-based professional practices. So those were what successful schools did 
consistently and sustainably that made them continue to be successful. And so some of those here, I just gave a few examples. Um, expect and monitor sound instruction in a variety of modes. So good schools really um, were focused on using a different, uh, a variety of modes of teaching their students. Um, read or defining the purpose policies and practices of a school community. Sometimes school community falls a little bit to the wayside or it falls to the PTO or something. Um, but really good successful schools made that part of their focus every time they met. So making sure that the school is a welcoming place, um, making sure that we have expectations for teachers and students and teachers. And then the last example here is engage teachers in aligning and structure, aligning instruction, excuse me, with standards and benchmarks. Um, indicators of effective practice, um, they're guideposts for the effective practice. So we essentially took the effective practice, broke it down into all of those things that um, plain language behavioral, we don't put a lot of jargon in there. Um, we try to omit that. Um, so who does what? Um, it's aligned with the research. So again, a lot of most school improvement plans require schools to identify the research that they're using. Um, so they have to, you know, put the resource or where they got the information. With Darago Star, you don't have to do that because it's actually built into the system. So unless you're using some other um, other additional research, which you can most certainly do. Um, and then you may want to cite that. But for the most part, the research is given to you to read already. Um, we also give you some additional tools. There's videos for some of the indicators that show um, either teachers, you know, doing some of these practices in their classrooms, principals talking about how they implemented some of these effective practices. Um, and then in um, additional tools, there might be templates, there might be activities, there's things that your teams can do to really figure out if you're doing these practices at full implementation, or if you need to do a little bit more work. Um, things to keep in mind when you're working with indicators, there's all sorts of indicators in the system. So we focus on teachers, teams, principals, students, um, so really making sure that when you decide on the indicators that you're selecting for your plan, that you kind of do them in a variety of areas. Um, indicators are meant to be discussed and worked on by teams, not just one person, um, which we have seen in the past, but we're really wanting teams to come together, have a conversation with the Wise Ways Research utilizing the tools, templates, the resources to figure out if we're doing these well, and if not, um, let's make a plan for making for getting better. And then I stressed this earlier that for indicators that start with all teachers, all teams, all students, um, our goal can't be most teachers do it. Our goal really should be all teachers do it. So it all means all. So that should be your focus. Sometimes it takes a while to get there. Um, but it really should, we don't want to shortchange anybody and say that we don't have expectations that all of our teachers can do it. We really, we really believe that all teachers can do all of these things. Um, here's some examples of the indicators in the system. Um, all teams operate with work plans for the year and specific work products to produce. That means all of the teams in your school. So as you start having conversations as a leadership team, um, make a list of all of your teams. Do they all have work plans? Do they all keep meetings and agenda minutes? Um, all of those things you know, make a difference when, when you're doing it across the board change in your school. Um, instructional time teams meet for blocks of time, four to six hour blocks once a month. Um, I talked about this indicator earlier, and you can see just a, a, a variety of the indicators. Um, I also referred to the one about the principal spends at least 50% of his or her time in the classroom working with teachers. Um, 
we we have really seen um, principals break down what they do in a day, what they do in a week. And, and there's a lot of things that we can share. There's a lot of places where others can share that responsibility because it makes a huge difference when the principals really get to spend 50% of their time. Um, and the wise ways, you know, is there to support um, how that can be successful and why that was successful. All right, so theoretically we've picked our indicators and the next block is um, talking about the success cycle. Um, I'll be honest, I put our plan up there because I'm trying to get it changed to say our plan because it would make more sense to be up there. Um, so I put both of them there. Um, and this is about you have selected your indicators and now it's time for your team to assess where they currently are um, in regards to the indicator, um, create a plan for those that need to be worked on and action steps, and then to continue to meet to monitor the work. So you've selected your indicators and that's what we call your plan. And so I'm going to talk about a few things that are on the success cycle page because this is a great resource. It's usually the first one that coaches go to to be able to see um, what the school is working on. Are they making progress? Are they meeting on a regular basis and kind of keeping up with the work? So in the success cycle, um, you'll see at the top, it just defines that we're only displaying the selected indicators. So I think there's 99 or 100 some indicators in Darago Star. If your focus is 10, it will only show the 10 here because that's all you need to see. It's all you need to worry about right now. Um, the success cycle is meant to just kind of show you a quick progress glance at where you are. It also serves as an entry point for assessing, creating, and monitoring each individual indicator. So I'm just going to point out some key features here. Um, as you look at the indicators in the success cycle, you can see when the indicator was initially assessed. <clears throat> um, the index score, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's really your priority score, like how high of a priority is it and how easy is it to address. Um, the higher the score, the quicker the wins. So that could be some low hanging fruit that your teams might, you know, let's start with that one because it's a 10 and, and it, it's a little bit easier. Um, if you have created a plan for any of the indicators that will show which leadership team member is assigned to it to manage and monitor it, what is the target date that the team decided um, that they could implement this indicator by, and then how many action steps were created? What's the progress of the action steps? Um, so that's just a quick way to glance at the progress. I would highly encourage coaches to come here first if they're looking at the plan um, and seeing if their schools are kind of staying on task. You can obviously run reports right from this, um, this page as well. And this is one feature that I, I think works very well. We want leadership team members to um, be meeting twice a month on a regular basis. Um, and one of the thing that's in, things that is important is when the teams um, assign a target date, um, they really need to be realistic about that. If it doesn't happen um, on time or you're not done, change the target date. So this will just alert you if things um, are past due and you can make those updates in the system. Um, you can archive indicators. So if you want to reset an indicator, restart an indicator, you can actually do that directly in your system and will archive any work that you had previously done. Um, and you can, you'll have access to that once you start assessing the indicator again. So if you need to reset any indicators, um, you can just click archive indicators and then select those that you want to. Um, you need to add or um, edit indicators. So back in set direction, if you wanted to go back there and, and change your indicator selection, you can most certainly do that. 
And then of course, by clicking the individual indicator, you can get into the assess, create, and monitor piece for that individual indicator. And this is just a picture of the cycle. Um, and in the system, I talk about indicators, but as you start assessing the indicators, anything that is not fully implemented then becomes an objective. So we don't refer to it as an indicator when it, once it's in the create plan piece. And this is just an example of that. So when you assess the indicator, it says all teams operate. Um, if you decide that you're not fully implemented and you need to create a plan, it actually changes to say all teams will operate. Um, and that's just some word changes that we make in the system. So it looks more like a goal or an objective. Um, when you're assessing the indicator, these are three things that are pretty important. Utilizing the Wise Ways research um, videos, the tools, those are all right on the page for you as you click the indicator in the upper right hand corner. All of those are accessible just by clicking a button. Um, engaging in a culture of candor and acquiring a deep understanding of the practice. Again, those conversations are really cru uh, crucial, um, sometimes cruel too, but crucial. Um, and utilizing the wise ways really gets everybody on the same page. A lot of times we think we know what this indicator might mean, um, but once you really, as a team, read the wise ways research, we know now that we're all kind of in the same box. We know what we're all thinking about and what the research says. Um, so it's really good to um, use the wise ways research to be able to have those deep understandings. And for the next few slides, I've really just tried to break down assess, create, and monitor into the different parts and pieces that the system will ask of you. So um, you're going to, of course, review the research, have that conversation with your team, and then you determine, are we fully implemented? Do we have no implement, inflammation, implementation? Um, or are we limited? So we do some things well, we do a lot of things well, but we're not quite fully implemented. Sometimes it's just that you don't have a sustainable plan in place and that's what you need to build upon. Um, so, you know, mark it as limited and then go to the next step. There is a place to rate the indicator. So how high of a priority is it? One, two or three? And then opportunity score refers to how easy is it to address. We can do it within the current guidelines. Um, we need to we need more money um, to be able to do that, or we need to get with the the district and pass some some um, some things to be able to do, to do this. And then describe what you do right now. So in assess, it doesn't have to be what you wish you want to do. It's what are you doing right now? Um, you know that's you know that's re related to this indicator, um, because you will be able to in the next step say all the things that you want to do. So this is just initially this is where we were. Let's see if I can get my slide to switch here. All right. Um, when assessing the indicator, the leadership team, these are six questions that we always think are important. So what is the straightforward literal meaning uh, and intent of the indicator? How do we know to what extent we have this implemented? What data did we use or should we use to analyze this? Um, what instruments do we need to create or um, to gather that data? Who will make the data available and what does it look like now? So those are six questions that especially at the beginning, it's nice to have those on a piece of paper um, to be able to say, did we answer all of these questions? Um, I'm going to talk about the wise ways research, which is again embedded for each of the indicators. Inside of those, they have guiding questions. By the end of your conversation with your team, you should be able to answer each one of those questions. Um, 
And then that means you've kind of had a, a full conversation about it. So look for the guiding questions in the Wise Ways Research. They're usually right at the top. Um, if the team decide or determines that they truly are fully implemented already, um, they should be able to meet all the requirements in the research. They should have evidence of current implementation and a sustainable plan should be in place already. And that's how you can mark it as fully implemented. If you can't, it's not a big deal. Again, you can't make anything better that you're not working on. So it's better to work on something and to get it to 100, 110%. So if you say, you know what, maybe we don't have all the evidence gathered, um, just say we're limited development and focus on making sure that that, inf that evidence is gathered. Um, likewise, if you're at no development or implementation or limited, you just mark that in the system and you move on to the next step. And the next step opens um, is create a plan. So in creating a plan, um, there's kind of a few just details that you have to do for each of the objectives that you're going to focus on. Again, those were indicators that were not fully implemented. Um, you want to assign a team member to be responsible for managing and monitoring that specific objective. Um, this is how we distribute the work amongst the team. You want to set a target date and be, be realistic about what your target date is. Um, I had an a entire a school who assigned everything to the year 2052. And when I asked them why they said to that or said everything for 2052, they said they didn't want to get behind or feel rushed. Um, but we truly believe there should be a sense of urgency. Um, and so um, one thing they also didn't see was progress because they could never mark anything off. But we think that you need to be realistic when you set a target date. If you think that you can get it implemented in a month, set it for a month. If you think it's going to take until the end of the school year, set it to the end of the school year. And if, if you had set it at two weeks and it comes to two weeks and you're not fully implemented um, or you haven't um, met the objective or even an action step, all you need to do as a team is have a conversation and figure out how much more time do we need and reset your target date. You can go in and edit that. Um, so just make sure that if you haven't completed it, you have a conversation how much longer it will take and just edit that in the system. And then you want to describe what it will look like when fully met. Obviously the objective is your goal, but what do you want it to look like in your school, with your teachers, with your students? So um, just think about, you know, this is a success practice, but we want it to look like this in our school. And then don't forget to include and have a conversation now about what evidence are you going to need to, de um, to determine full implementation. So what do we need to gather along the way to make sure that we're fully implemented? And also, how will we sustain the effort? So what are we going to have to put into place to make sure that we consistently do this from year to year? Um, the goal with creating a plan is to make sure that you're putting sustainability efforts in place that if the principal leaves, the plan doesn't leave with him. If half your teachers leave, the plan doesn't leave with the teachers. It's about these are practices that are really put into place in our school and we want to be able to continue it because your whole student population is not likely going to change. So it's really about putting those sustainable efforts in there. Um, when describing the plan, when you want to think about what it should look like in your school, make sure to include specifically who does it, what do they do, and how often do they do it? Um, because this is going to help you with your sustainability so that if you implement something this year and you know that it was, you know, the principal that did this or the process manager did this or um, the science teacher did this, you'll know exactly who should be doing something at all times. Um, and this is just a few samples of evidence, classroom observations, surveys, sign-in sheets, meeting minutes, documents, 
Um, that can all be uploaded into Darago Star if you want to. There is the ability for you to upload documentation. Um, the purpose of gathering evidence um, is really for you. It's not necessarily for the state. It's not necessarily for your coach, although it's great for coaches to be able to see uploaded documentation. The purpose is really for you to build sustainability and to know that you're fully implementing some of these indicators. Once you've created a plan, this is what we want to, it to look like in our school. You need to break it down into action steps and be very specific here. So for example, if part of your plan was to survey parents, um, but you don't have a survey, one would be, you know, Charlotte's going to create the survey. Two would be Laura will distribute the survey to the parents. The third action step might be that um, Jeannie is going to look at all the data and see what and evaluate the data. So really be very specific with your action steps. You should be able to mark them off um, quickly and easily. Don't put too many things in one step. Um, again, target dates that are realistic and doable, and make sure that as you meet, after you start creating action steps, your leadership team, when you meet, should be pulling up the actions report and checking off to see what's done, what needs more time, um, if there's any issues with completing any of those action steps. So continually focusing on what are our action steps and monitoring the progress of that completion. Um, obviously, monitoring the plan here, um, have we fully implemented the objective? So when all of the indicator action steps are completed for an objective, the system gives you a pop-up that says, all of your action steps are completed. Have you fully implemented the in indicator or the objective? So as a team, you just have to decide if you have or have not fully implemented the indicator refer back to the wise ways to some of the tools, um, look at your evidence of implementation. Do you have a sustainable plan in place? Um, and if you do, great. The system will ask you to identify each of those areas. But sometimes we realize after the conversation that we haven't actually fully implemented the indicator like we thought we would with six action steps. Um, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong. There's no dings. Nobody gets an F. All you have to do is say, no, we have not actually fully implemented it. And the system will tell you just to go back and add new action steps to help your team reach full implementation. So it's pretty intuitive how um, it will just kind of guide you to the next step. And there's no wrong answers in the system. Um, and I figured all of you at this point might need a little cheering up. So um, what do you do when a team decides that you have reached full implementation? And this one is sometimes <coughs> overlooked, but you should celebrate every single win, every single win, even if it's small. Make sure that every time you have completed an action, action step, it's a great job, what's next? Celebrate that with not just your leadership team, but I would celebrate these, um, these wins with all of the faculty, all of the teachers in the building to know that you're making progress. So don't overlook celebrating. Um, research and resources. I just have a couple <coughs> pieces here about that because our next webinar that we're going to do in a couple weeks will really focus on using the research, using the resources, not just inside of Jerigo Star, but we have some additional resources on our websites that can be very handy to your teams. So the wise ways give a context for each indicator. There's guiding questions. Of course, it's a research synthesis. Sometimes there's action principles or action steps right inside of the wise ways, so you don't even have to make them up. Um, examples, templates, activities, the indicators in action for some, not all indicators, but some indicators do have videos aligned to them where you can see principals talking about um, what it's like to um, implement some of these practices. 
Um, and then additional resources. There's some really cool stuff inside of the additional resources. There's templates, rubrics. You know, if you want to make sure you have the right people on the leadership team and you're doing the right things, um, if you go to any of those indicators that talk about a leadership team is in place and additional resources, you can find a rubric to see if you have the right team in place. <coughs> So there's some really great resources and there's actually a whole suite um, of tools for teachers um, in, embedded in those additional resources. And I will highlight where you can get those, um, the whole suite of them um, besides individually for each indicator. I will make a place where you can get the whole suite at one time, which is pretty great. And that's it. That's really about what Dare or Go Star is. It's just taking it action by action, one step at a time, starting off with a few indicators, um, assessing them, planning them, creating action steps, um, and distributing the work. There is a feature in the system to manage your meetings. I would highly encourage you to um, utilize the meetings system. You can create the agenda, you can go back and enter meeting minutes, you can easily notify your team members <clears throat> that um, a meeting agenda has been created or you've up uploaded the minutes. Um, why should we use Darago Star Minutes? Again, um, to be able to best utilize the support from the state, from the coaches, even from your district. Um, it's really saves a lot of time um, if we have everything in one system and it leaves more time to collaborate. There are reports and there's also the feedback area, which is where your coaches will provide feedback to you in the system. That creates the law, having the log of feedback here really creates a history of the conversations that we've had about school improvement. So I think it's really important for coaches to be able to provide the feedback in the system. Um, I won't go into too much detail, but there are six reports um, on the reports page where you can get all of the live information, whether you want a summary report, a report that just shows what our focus is, or you want the whole thing in the comprehensive report. All of those can easily be found on the reports section. Um, in the coaching feedback, again, a coach can come look at your plan. They have their own logins and passwords. They can send you a coaching comment as a team. The team can reply back, obviously, with the principal or process manager um, access. Um, and you can, you know, comment and reply back to the coach right in the system. Uh, this is just a reminder for um, that coaches are not there to do the work of the school, but they're there to help build your capacity and support the work that you're doing in the school. If you can't find something, you don't know how something works, and you want your coach to help you out with that, um, ask them. If you need some data and you don't know where to get it, ask your coach. Maybe they know where you can get it. So it's really about your coach supporting your work and building your capacity. Um, other tips and hints, inside of the system, there are little light bulbs embedded everywhere. And it's not just a, how do we, which button do I push? It really has some incredible information. Um, it's almost like a story about why you're doing each of those pieces. So I would highly encourage you, even when you're in creating a meeting, it tells you why you're creating a meeting. Why are you doing this? How is that going to help us improve our practice as a school? Um, there are on the main pages, there are video walkthroughs. So you can go there and it just kind of walks you through the process. And then of course, on the main page, I just wanted to highlight just a few areas really quickly. There is the guest and leadership team login and password over on the right. You can upload documents by clicking the file folder. And then every once in a while, the state may send out a bulletin board message that says we have a training coming up, um, your MOUs are due, 
something very broad for all of the schools so that you might check there. It will have a little alert on it if there is a new message there. It'll say one next to it or two. Um, the other pieces on the menu bar, if you want to see a full list of your indicators or print those out, or you want to have a quick access to all the Wise Ways videos tools, you can use resources. Uh, the program contact information from the state is a link there. Tech support will get you to myself or Lou Ann. And we, we're here from, we're in the Midwest, so we're here from about 7.30 till about 4 every day. Um, you can call, you can send a tech support ticket if you need something. Um, and then also complete forms. There are a couple forms there inside of complete forms for Maine schools. There is the MOU as well as a CNASAU consolidated planning template. It's a mouthful. Um, and then every year there are some submissions where you can submit, um, for example, your plan. There's a couple points in time. Um, that's really just so that you, as well as the state, <clears throat> has a historical <clears throat> copy of your work at that point in time. And that's it. And I am up for questions if anybody should have any questions. Thank you, Stephanie. You're welcome. It's a, it was a it looks like a very valuable program and plan. We got a I'm in a very small school situation. Um, we only have 38 students pre-K to eight, and I am the teaching lead teacher principal of the building, and we just have uh, two other teachers um, in the building with uh, some ed tech support. So, I mean, we're always looking to make improvements, and I think this is great information to grow and as a platform. We're definitely interested. Um, I'm just thinking we're such a small staff. Um, it might be a, a little bit of a challenge. Everybody's doing everything now, yeah. pretty much. We're yeah, you know, so it's it it would be it would be difficult. But we've we've talked about this curriculum wise. We've talked about school improvement, and, and that's why I'm here because um, we're definitely interested in growing and and trying to take the school to another level if we can. And, and some of those indicators, I would encourage you to, if you have a coach, to get with them, um, but to, to look at maybe all of the things that you are doing, some of the, the indicators might help, might help you streamline some of those processes. Um, and obviously, it's going to take a little bit of extra work at the beginning, but it may help you streamline some of those processes. And you might be one of those schools that only focuses on three indicators, you know, because you have so much going on and not a lot, but um, I think it still can make a huge difference. Anybody else? So Steph, maybe just a reminder, our next session is? I have it up on the screen, October 13th from yep. three, three to four Eastern time. Um, the Getting Better Together module, if you go to Indistar and there is a free resources button in the middle of the page, kind of, we call it cattywampus in Illinois, but <laughs> down to diagonal from the login button, you'll see free resources. Um, and then you can find that um, Getting Better Together module in one of the resource pieces there. And Steph, I'll just quickly add in as we're closing, because I, I know it's the time. Uh, there, We have 178 indicators in the main system for Dirigo Star. Um, and we pretty much have collaborated statewide and really vetting and updating those. But Stephanie will allude more to those on our next time. But they range from leadership team indicators that have been vetted. Uh, and maybe Stephanie, next time you can talk a little more on where do those come from? We're, how are those wise ways created? I think sometimes that's been a question in the past. Uh, how are they developed? 
I certainly will. I'm all set. Steph, thank you. Thank you, everybody. You're a good audience. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome.